Y'all know what time it is. Thanksgiving is upon us. Black Friday's coming up. Uh, uh, gonna be a lot of spending in America. A whole lot of spending in America. You know, all the bad kids gonna get gifts. All the good kids gonna get gifts. Uh, people gonna go into credit card debt to appease the kids to hold up tradition. Um, so in this video today, we just gonna dive right into it. I mean, Alex, what's your thoughts and feelings on, you know, Christmas and the elements that, uh, and how it affects the family financial? I think it's very obvious how it affects it. I think uh, at this time of year, a lot of Americans go, I, I would say back to zero, but I would say under zero. I, I know people that go into debt and then the only way of them paying off that debt is tax returns. And then they're back at square one and it's just a repeated cycle. And the sad thing too is like, like you said, bad kids, good kids, they all get gifts, but like the kids never see the struggle that the parents go through just for this created, you know, holiday where kids think that they deserve this holiday, that they are, that it's an obligation to celebrate this holiday. And really all it's doing is holding their parents behind and then 18 years go by and the kids don't even remember the Christmases that they had. So it's like, you know, they went through, they really, they wasted all their time more than money. Um, that's, that's the way I view it because the parents constantly have to keep working up for this holiday and families spend thousands of dollars. And, you know, they like, I've, I've spoken to people trying to explain to them, like, if they want to celebrate it, why spend thousands? Why can't you just spend 20 bucks here or something like that? Like they, they have this feeling like they have to make it a point to their seven year old that here's a PS5, here's a, here's $300, here's some brand new Jordans, like all these gifts for like an eight year old or a seven year old that like doesn't need stuff like that. I mean, truthfully, nobody needs stuff like that, but like, at their age, they hardly even understand what it is. But I see a lot of pain. Uh, yeah, uh, let, me, uh, let me let me let me correct you on a couple things. And um, I mean, I'm not correcting you from your viewpoint. I just want to point out some things that you said. You said kids believe that they deserve this holiday. <clears throat> kids don't even know what the holiday is unless their parents force it down their throat and make them believe that it's this enchanted idea. So right. it's the parents that's doing it. And so, yeah, the kids don't know the financial struggles the parents go through to make this happen, but it's the parents' fault that the kids even have an obligation to do something for them. My son is nine years old. He had never came up to me and said, hey, what am I getting for Christmas? What is Santa bringing me for Christmas? It's not even a topic in his house. I'm not gonna sit here and lie lie to my kid and say some fat man is coming down the chimney that I don't even have uh, passing out gifts knowing damn well it took my blood, sweat, and tears for money. I'm not buying the gifts in the first place, but my son don't even ask about it. And mind you, all, all the kids he hang around, they celebrate it. My son look at them like they're crazy. Not that we can't afford it, it's just we're not making it an obligation because what happens is, like I said, it's a tradition that is perpetuated and nobody questions. I mean, the only reason why I don't celebrate it is because, and you and you called it out. You said kids don't understand the uh, financial hardships the parents go through. I just happened to ask because I knew my mom at a young age. I was like, how the hell is my mom affording all this? So I just asked the question. And she, she told me what she had to go through to afford it. And then I said, oh, hell no, I'm not doing this no more. This sounds crazy. But most people don't ask. And then so kids, so kids grow up to be adults and things like that. And then they just keep going on with their tradition because that's what their parents did. And then they indoctrinate their kids into it. And then it goes on, so on, so forth. And then yet here we are. The other thing you said was uh, they usually pay it back the debt on uh, tax returns. No, they usually... That would make sense, right? That would make sense. People are like, oh yeah, I could just, you know, I'm gonna pay it back all on tax return. But most people don't. 
Most people might say that's their plan, but then as soon as that tax return check hit, oh, well, I'll put, I'll put a little bit of money on it because I'm going to go buy something else. There's a reason why most people move after they get their tax returns. It's because they didn't save up money, like I'm talking about renters and tenants and things like that, because they didn't, they didn't save up money the rest of their uh, life, I mean, the rest of the year, so tax returns, big check. Okay, I could use that as a security deposit in the first month's rent. Tax returns is most people's biggest check that they receive. And they don't look at it as, all right, now I could pay off debt. If that was the case, we wouldn't have a trillion dollars in credit card debt, which is about to balloon, I believe, to about 1.7, 1.8 uh, trillion in the next year or so. So those are the, the nuances of it. And I just sit there. And of course, I live close to a mall. I live close to a Walmart and Target. I'm already ready to see the lines, the stores packed, and it's the insanity that goes along with it. But I, the part that I just will never understand is why do you do it? And the thing is, and the parents know that it's crazy because by the time they give their kids Christmas gifts on December 25th, by February 25th, the kids are not playing with none of the toys. Most of them broke in the closet. 90% of the stuff they don't even use. And then if you go ask people, what'd you get last year for Christmas? People can't even remember. So you spend all this money for really a couple of days and then everything just goes back to the same cycle that they've been in. And then they go through it, they see it. They go through it and see it, go through it and see it, and it goes over and over and over again. You're buying one-year-old Christmas gifts, two, three, four. They're not remembering this crap. And ain't like you can even buy them a PS, a PS4, 5, 6, 12, whatever the video game system out there by then. So why keep going through the cycle? And I know a lot of uh, uh, Bible thumpers, and I don't say that in a negative way. But a lot of church people are gonna say, "Oh, Christmas is Christmas is Jesus' birthday." All right, well, how about celebrate Jesus' birth? There's nowhere in the Bible where it said Jesus was born and everybody got gifts. They talk about three wise men bringing gifts to Jesus. So you saying your kids is important to Jesus? No. If you want to use that logic, but then who said it was on December twenty fifth? So. Yeah. They're crazy. These people are crazy. But it, it, it was a perfect ploy by the, the by the governments around the world to implement these holidays to make people stay broke. So you, you work, you get 30 to 40 percent of your paycheck tax, and then you got a holiday every month to spend all that money. And then you wonder why you don't have any money at the end of the month. Because everybody's been indoctrinated, like I said in the previous video. I don't believe in group think because I don't believe a large group of people are smart. If I see a large group of people doing anything, I'm doing the opposite. Because why? Because the majority of the people are broke. Majority of the people are stupid. Because if, if they stop the thing, then they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. So I'm just not doing what they're doing at all. Balance what you guys. No, nah, it's just funny. Um, it, like it's a bit off topic from finance, but like when you mentioned uh, Christmas being Jesus's birthday, like. And it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that uh, that it's his birthday. And like, it's actually like a, it's a Roman holiday. It's a pagan holiday that was adopted by the Catholic Church. So it's just, it's funny because like that doesn't even fit uh, because it's it's not correct. It's not true at all. But <clears throat> people will just make up any kind of excuse to, to celebrate it. And you're right. I mean, it's, it's, all it is, is it's a strategized um it's strategized by the government to, I mean, you look like we did, we did a video on that with the one guy explaining every month there's either a holiday or a birthday and you're constantly stuck in a cycle. <clears throat> yeah. If you, um, if you cut those out, you'll, I mean, people would see the amount of money that they could save. And there's so many other examples, not just our channel, but there's, there's other, um, we should have done a video on it, but you had sent me a video before on a guy that said that he never celebrated any holiday or birthday. Um, and that's how he had the money to invest in his business. So it's, I mean, but people, people have to figure out how to emotionally detach themselves from feeling like it's an obligation.
and for the viewers that's watching this video, I have one challenge for you. One challenge for you. Only do it one time. Don't celebrate it at all. Pretend you're so broke that you can't afford a pair of socks and let the holiday pass. Let the Black Friday sales pass. Let the Christmas holiday pass and you just live your normal life. And then when you wake up January 25th, you will realize the big difference it will have on your uh, family's financial impact. Just do it one time. Once you see it once, then you're going to be like, oh, now I understand. But the people never understand because they say, oh, I can never do that. It's a tradition. I can I can never do that. Just do it once. I haven't did it in almost 30 years. And I see the financial impact it has on my life. But just do it once and see. But all that being said, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, for anybody that's upset about what I said about the Bible thumpers, um, I didn't say it in a negative way, but I mean it as people that swear they know the Bible, but I don't think they read the pages. Uh, but we'll see you in the next video, and y'all have a good one. See you guys.